This is our seventh session on Psalm 1, and I said last time it would be our last one. (laughs) But I am going to do a summary, number eight, of the whole psalm. So we'll get through it in this session, but then we'll step back and try to understand the argument of the whole and why it's at the beginning of the Psalter. So in this session, we're focusing on what happens to the wicked and the righteous in this last unit. Father, as we look one more time at the whole here, I pray that you would show us not only a right understanding of what happens to the righteous and the wicked in the last day, but that our hearts would be broken for the lostness of the wicked and our hearts would rejoice in the merciful salvation of the righteous. Come and guide us now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight, that's such a dominant word in this psalm, is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates. That delight leads to meditation day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit, So you've got this stream of grace flowing up through the law of God into the heart of meditation, into the soul of delight, yielding fruit. There's the picture of the the life of the righteous. And its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Who are the wicked? The wicked are not so. Here's a description of the righteous, and they are not so. They are walking in the council of the wicked. They are standing in the way of sinners. They are sitting in the seat of scoffers. They are not delighting in the law of the Lord. They are not meditating on the day, on the law of the Lord, day and night. Their life is not like a tree planted by life-giving, hope-giving, joy-giving streams of water from God's grace. Their leaf is not permanent and green, it it withers, and they do not, especially ultimately, prosper in all they do. They are not so, but are like chaff. Chaff. What is that? Those are the husks, right? The husks around the grain. The grain is nourishing. Husks don't give any nourishment And so they are, they're light, not weighty, they're useless for any kind of life-giving nourishment. They are temporary, they are gone by the wind. And what, what does it imply when it says that the wind drives them away? When it implies that that these these big shot chaff people are not their own master. The wind, and who rules the wind? God rules the wind. They are blown away. And we need to we need to form the habit as Christians, no matter what our position is, low or high, to recognize the greatness of the world as chaff. Like First Peter says. All their glory is like the flower of grass. The grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. Or here's a picture in Psalm 49, 10 and 11. For he sees that even the wise die, the fool and the stupid alike must perish and leave all their wealth, all their chaff wealth to others. Their graves are their homes forever, their dwelling places to all generations, though they called lands by their own names. Whoa, that's a lot of power, right? Alexander the Great, moving through 
the world, naming cities, Alexandria. Chaff, that's what he is. He's chaff. Man in his pomp, no matter how big, is not going to remain. He is like the beasts that perish. And therefore, we need to remember that we are children of the living God. And whatever exalts itself against God, no matter how massive, politically or financially or industrially or militarily or culturally, it is, it is chaff. It's just chaff. It's going to be blown away and the righteous will stand in the judgment. So the righteous are chaff, I mean, the wicked are chaff. And because they are not like the righteous, therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment. So there's coming a judgment. There's coming a judgment. And the wicked will not stand in it. They will perish. The sinners, which is parallel to wicked here, will not stand in the congregation of the righteous, which implies that there is a congregation of the righteous that will stand in the judgment, but the wicked will not be a part of this. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. Which is a strange statement in our ears. In the Bible, the word know has a lot more meanings than it does for us. Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bore a son. So no is a, is a circumlocution for sexual relations. Or um, Amos 3, 2, you only, Israel, have I known of all the peoples of the earth. So no is like election. I think in English, the best we can do would be to remember a word like this. In the word acknowledgement or acknowledges, let's just say acknowledges, you see the word no? I think that would be the closest thing we can get to this. The Lord acknowledges, he approves, recognizes and affirms. He attends to. And he guides. And that's why they stand in the judgment. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. He acknowledges it, approves it, affirms it, attends to it, guides it. But the way of the wicked will perish. And I picture it like a way like this. Leading to a precipice. And this precipice is leading to hell. The way of the wicked perishes. It, it leads to hell. And we should grieve over the fact that people go there. And we should be so eager, prayerful, bent on pointing the way to people and say, come, Come, meditate with me on the law of the Lord. Come, delight yourself in the Lord. This is not a heavy burden. Why would you perish? Forsake the counsel of the wicked. Forsake the way of sinners. Forsake the seat of scoffers. Come join me in the delight in God that I have in meditating on his law and living by the streams of grace. And yet, there it is, judgment. The wicked will not stand in the judgment. Their way will perish. Now, we want to stand back next time and try to get this whole psalm under one banner, under one point, and see what uh, the point is that it stands at the beginning of the Psalter.